Hi there, my name is Raylan, and I am here today with Kyle Davies. Kyle is the author of The Intelligent Body, Reversing Chronic Fatigue and Pain from the Inside Out. He is also the founder of the Energy Flow Coaching Program, and he is here today to talk about the link between our health and our emotions, which I think we're all starting to appreciate is very important, but many of us, myself included, don't really know much about that or how it works or how we can use that to help us on our, our path to good health. So welcome, Kyle. Thank you so much for being on the channel today. Well, it's welcome back, isn't it? And it's, it I'm is. thrilled to be back. Thank you very much for having me back. Great. I really enjoyed our chat last time. We kind of dived into a few things. Looking forward to where this takes us today. So I'm excited. Yes, me as well. For those of you who haven't seen it, Kyle was on the channel a while back and we did a video on chronic fatigue recovery and the mind-body connection. So I'll link that on the video screen and put it in the video description if you'd like to check it out. But yeah, I've got a ton of questions for you today, so I'm excited to get into this. We're talking about health and our emotions and you talk about how emotion relates to health, but what does that even mean? Like, What do you mean by emotion? What, what, is, what does that look like? <laughs> this is great. That is the place to start, isn't it? What do you mean by by the word emotions? What are emotions? What are they? I think that is really interesting. I mean, when I think back to doing psychology at university 33 years ago, I'm not sure we talked about emotion. I think emotion was one of those things. Was, we're not quite sure what it means, what it does, what it's for. And I think because psychology in particular wanted to be a bona fide hard science you know there was behaviorism so we're just measuring behavior and then into cognitions we mentioned you know we're looking at thought processes and emotion was kind of a little bit swept under the carpet really and i think that to a certain extent continued the ideas and theories of emotion were, were more about well what is emotion where does it come from? How is it influenced? How is it created? What does it do? Those, you know, those sorts of ideas, much more than uh, really what's the, the role of emotion in health? Does it have a, a role in our health? And if so, what is that? I'm not sure that that's really been looked into an awful lot. I mean, it's been the kind of a mainstay of my work and energy flow coaching. And I think that, you know, as a result of that, we've we've kind of taken our own own view of what emotion is. But for me, I think one of the most important things and following on from what we talked about last time of the mind and body are connected is that I think historically people have probably thought about emotion as something that's all in their mind. It's a kind of a made up thing. But crucially, it, it, it's a mental process and that you think some thoughts and then you have some feelings then if you want to change the way you feel you change the way you think so it's all about thinking there's no surprise in that within western culture within western society we are very brain thinking cognitive focused it's all about the head it's almost like we live in that head space and we channel everything through that well it's got to be all about the head now what we know is, you know, I think some really, really interesting things. First thing we know is that, well, our emotion is a complex physiological process that affects pretty much all of the body and all of the brain. It's affecting all of the organs. So that's the first thing. It's not just this kind of mental process. The second thing I think that's important about emotion is that it's our emotional processing occurs at far higher speeds than our cognitive processing. That means that our emotion and our, our emotional state and our state of consciousness as I would call it, is affecting our thinking much more than our thinking is affecting our emotion. Those things are particularly important. We know as well, in terms of the mind-body connection, that we have neurons in our heart, we have neurons in our gut, we have an enteric nervous system in the gut. So there's this flow of intelligent activity throughout body and brain. And we know that the heart and the brain create electric and magnetic fields, and the heart's fields are far, far bigger than the fields created by the brain. The uh, electromagnetic fields of the heart extend outside of the body. So 
you know, we have this all, you know, the old cliches of heart overhead, but that the heart will will be influenced and pick up on information, if you will, because the, the heart field extends outside the body that will pick up on information out there in life. So it's almost like things land in the heart field and then the flow of information from heart to brain exceeds the flow of information from brain to heart. So what you've got is this kind of ascending influence. So in my view, that's how emotion kind of comes about, is it floods up through uh, the body, through the brain, and then you know we then you get a, a cycle. So the descending uh, flow of information is important as well. But I think it's that's the that's one of the the, the crucial things. What does that mean? What it and how is it important? Well, what it means is that it's not all about thinking. You know, we've had an entire industry based around well, you've got to you know change the way you think, change your life. You know, it's all about changing your thinking. And when we we can open up to this idea, well, the body is responding, the heart field, the body is responding quicker than the thinking brain and given all of that attention to thinking it may not get us where we need to be so that i think that's some of the crucial stuff with our emotion i think what is also interesting is that our emotion affects us right down to the level of our dna so negative emotion um your your fear your anger your frustration your 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 sadness those will lead to a constriction of the braiding of the dna whereas positive or as i would say higher vibrational emotion joy compassion happiness that leads to a loosening of the braiding of our dna i think what's interesting about that is that very often when we feel those lower vibrational or negative emotions the angers the fears we can feel tighter we feel constricted and conversely when we feel the positive emotions the higher vibrational emotions we tend to feel a bit looser there's that all over the the body kind of feel about it and i think so what we're getting at the micro level is happening at the macro level so for me that's kind of what emotion is emotion is this complex physiological process that's affecting the the dna the functioning of our cells the wiring of of the cells it's it's detected by the brain yes it's influenced by um our environment, our behaviour, critically our interaction with our, our the world around us. Uh, our thinking plays an influence or plays a part. But I think that from the health perspective and the way we work is it's we're looking at, but well, emotion is probably happening first. So we need to be paying attention to that. So, yeah, there's so many reasons I was excited to talk to you again today. I mean, one of them, especially on the topic of emotion, is, you know, when we go into our doctor's office uh, when we're having health problems, I suspect many of us are not asked about our emotions. It's not even a part of the conversation that I was thinking, aside from psychology, but it sounds like even in the field of psychology, it's not necessarily a primary focus. And then the other aspect of that, as you're talking, because this is what I love about talking to you, because you expand my mind and help me to understand things in new ways because I very much come from a place of my brain controls everything my thinking controls everything thinking happens first and I think that's also just a part of my personality and I like to feel this feeling of being in control of my life and I do different brain training things in meditation and I'm trying to influence my body and my health and my perspective and just everything so the whole concept of that thinking might not come first that emotion could go upwards or that healing comes from the body, not from the mind, is something I struggle to wrap my head around. And it also makes me feel like I have less control over things. So if emotion comes first, if if the thinking isn't what's driving everything, does that mean that we can't, we have less control over our health and our, our life? Oh, I don't think we, we certainly don't have less control over our health, but I th- you've raised some really interesting points. And I'm going to tie into the energy flow coaching approach of things. I think in Western culture, again, we believe that we have far more control of anything and everything than we actually do. We almost have no control. And one of the things that that we try to do in in our work is, is actually let go of the need to control. Now, we don't know, you know, there are stages to getting there because a perception of being out of control or fixating on things that lie outside of my control will lead to elevated stress levels. So a stage one can be, well, let's bring our attention back to what I'm able to control, which is for the most part is my attention to a certain extent, my behavior where I am directing my myself. That's what I'm able to, to, to control to an extent. But ultimately, 
I, I'm not in control of an awful lot. Now, when I allow myself to open up to the flow of life, I don't need to control. And, you, you know, this is the, that's, I guess, part of what energy flow coaching is about. It's becoming inward looking because our experience is created from the inside out. And when an awful lot of the time, what we're doing in life is we're, we're, we're trying to manage our internal experience. And very often we're doing that by looking on the outside. Well, if I manage the outside life, if I can control things out here, it means I control the input. I can I can control what I feel. I actually, you know, one of the things about our emotion is it's created within us. Uh, you know, our reality is generated in here. Uh, and it's not that it's directly controlled by something out there. So that's another important point about our emotion. That also goes with it, you know, so think it plays a role. I, I, I kind of, I think these theories change all the time. And I'm very open to the fact that, well, next year, there may be new theories, we'll know new things, and I'll have to expand my thinking on this stuff. But I quite like the ideas of Antonio Damasio, the neuroscientist, where he talks about our emotions being a non-conscious process. So emotion is happening, whether we're aware of it or not. Our body and brain is monitoring activity inside of the body, outside and the interaction. And then it produces uh, some emotion. Emotion, a simple way of looking at it, is just a feedback mechanism about our interaction with our environment, what we are doing. Emotion should all, ideally almost instantaneously trigger feeling so you have some feeling uh, and that's the the physiological sensation you know that tightness in the chest the hairs on the back of your neck you know those sorts of things uh, now I think the, you know kind of the interesting with that is that we know that yes we all know you can think thoughts and have feelings so that's the kind of idea is that there is this complex interplay between environment behavior thinking uh, and feeling or emotional feelings but I think that's the for me emo your emotion is occurring as a non-conscious process and that's happening potentially independently of your thinking and it could be that your emotion is entirely different from your thinking you could be thinking some thoughts detached from your emotion or your emotions could almost have an entirely different opinion of life and we need to marry those two we need to bring those two together so that the thinking brain is aware of of the the emotional body if we can put it in that way so We've got that where you've got our emotions then trigger and feeling. And ideally, we identify feelings because to a certain extent, they are a call to action. There's, it's certainly information. It's energy. It's information. It's informing us either about our interaction with the world around us or our model of reality, our framework, our narratives, our stories. So, so emotions in that sense, in that sense is, is always useful. The other thing you kind of mentioned was all the sort of stuff that you do. I mean, one of the things we have in energy flow coaching is, is we're always looking for the for elegance. We're always looking for the minimum amount of activity, uh, therapy, coaching, anything that we have to do in order to, to write ourselves. You know, we have a fundamental principle that we have in a resilience we have innate well-being we're, we're self-correcting we're self-healing we are designed to come back into balance so what we want to do is the minimum we possibly can just to nudge ourselves back on track it's almost a little bit like um homeopathy where it's just giving you the minimum it's that you know it's that assumption that knowledge that the body is designed to heal itself to right itself and it's always working to do that because in Western medicine, it's like, well, you have some symptoms, you've got to lance them like a boil. Something is happening to you. It's, this, it's that pathologizing idea. Whereas in energy flow, coaching is much more about actually, you're probably out of balance. Something is blocked. There's an obstacle in the way. We just got to identify that, remove it, take it out of the way. Uh, and then we can begin to allow our natural energy flow to take over. And we, re, you know, we come back into balance. I appreciate I'm, I'm going off a little bit. It was only because you just said that about all those kind of things that you do. And that's one of the things that I had on my journey of doing loads of things, working on myself loads after like, 20 odd years of thinking how much difference has any of that actually made when it comes down to it when I just let myself be that's when I kind of come into balance that's when I flow it's not when I'm kind of doing all these things to myself so yeah there is some there are times where some remedial action is needed but it's the minimum so I think that yes thinking is going to affect our emotional feelings but 
what I experience in my work is that there's a disconnect very often is that, you know, this often comes from trauma where, you know, early life trauma or even through life trauma can mean this disconnection between head mind and emotional body or true self, as I would say. And when that happens, you know, you it's very easy to be kind of stuck in that thinking brain and lots of thinking can, you know, you can do all the thinking you like, but it doesn't really solve the issues of the emotional body. What we need to do is pull these two things together. But ultimately, crucially, the, that true self, that emotional body, that needs to be the boss. Whereas I think in Western culture, we view the head is the boss, the thinking brain is the boss. We solve everything through thinking. It's the thinking channel, that'll, that, you know, that'll do it for us. We kind of turn things on its head in energy flow coaching. We say, no, we want, we want to get away from thinking. We want to get it in to this, you know, what I would call our own energy flow, facilitate that, it's always happening. Get into the emotional body, get into the feelings, that somatic experience of getting into the body, feeling, and then understanding the kind of the messages that come through from that. As we do that, the the feeling emotional body will inform the brain and we can we marry the two up so we need that thinking brain but we need that thinking brain to be a dutiful servant rather than believing it's to be the boss that it just dominates and kind of rules the roost so yeah in, in terms of control i think the more you can drop into the body and open up and expand awareness um, the better you are identifying the feeling feedback the sensation you know the stuff that goes on in there and then when you do that it becomes easier to just allow yourself to flow I used to be somebody I mean, in my early kind of late teens early 20s I might have said this last time I experienced a lot of anxiety and depression and there will have been multiple primary causes for that because there always are for uh, for most things but I was locked in my head I think the more educated you are the more you get in your head and the more you think I just analyzed everything to death and I had to drag myself force myself out of my head in order to recognize in order to get balance I need to flow I need to be and I think that's what we do when we're attuning to our emotion it doesn't need to be a massively complex thing but we know that our emotions, to say, our emotion is affecting our thinking. What 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 goes on is that actually the brain reflects on what's going on in the body and tries to make predictions about what to do and what's going on. So it's the the body is always you know uh, having that impact and is always informing the brain. Uh, we think it's something out there, but it's it's not. It's the brain is reflecting on the body and then making assumptions, predictions, and trying to figure out which direction to move in. So I think that it's really, there's something liberating about letting go of that need to have to control things. And I think, you know, the way we do it in EFC is like, well, if you can I, I align with how you feel and then you go through a process of being OK with how you feel, you understand how you feel, you allow it. It's not a problem. You let it flow. When you do that, you don't have to control stuff because whatever you encounter, whatever comes up, you feel feelings and then you know you go through a process of of just allowing them and, and uh, you know working out well when do I need to take action when do I need to just let them flow, but you that that you know when you control have to control things less, life just flows life is simpler life is more straightforward and you're not having to do all of these kind of you know things to kind of fix yourself or to control life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, for people watching, because most of the people who watch my channel are unfortunately facing some sort of chronic health challenge right now. So what does this mean for them right now? If they're watching this, like, okay, how do I take this information and use it to help me uh, on my health journey back to health? So, okay, we need, this is all comes back now, we, we need to tie in, well, all that stuff about emotion is great and emotion thinking, that's all great, but how does that relate to my health? Mm. Well, this is what I think, is that um, the uh, HP access in the, in the brain, the midbrain, essentially oversees the emotion within the body. And... As I said, one of the reasons I like the the theories of Antonio Damasio that emotion is a non-conscious process and then immediately triggers feelings is that we know it's entirely possible to suppress feelings. I mean, I've had clients that have told me that they don't really know when they're hungry because they've tuned out from their body. And I think a lot of us do that in the Western world is we tune out from our body. So we su we learn to suppress or block or depress our feelings so what happens then is you can 
block the feelings, but emotion is still being produced. And the brain is identifying oh, there's, motion, there's, there's emotion in the system and it's kind of getting it's building up. So there must be something wrong. So my this, you know, my theory then or our theory in the work that we do is that. The HPA axis, the hypothalamus, pituitary, uh, adrenal axis, recognises this, that there is a build-up of emotion, assumes there must be something wrong, and then looks to take remedial action. Now, over a period of time, this will lead to a rewiring of neural pathways, where I believe feelings are kind of largely bypassed. So you get this, you know, this is where the stress response kind of gets stuck on. And that then in turn affects the endocrine system, the immune system, the autonomic nervous system. And then we get the plethora of symptoms that we experience. So this is where I believe that when we block or suppress emotion and we do that unconsciously, we do that in order to try to deal with and to cope with life, particularly, obviously, if it's trauma. It's almost almost an automatic response in the face of trauma. We separate out. We split off from something because the feelings can become overwhelming for the brain. In the short term, that works really well as a, as a method of coping. It sees me through. But unfortunately, when that becomes a pattern, that rewiring takes place. So what we have then is we don't we don't particularly feel our emotional feedback because that's all it is it's just feedback we don't feel it uh, and instead the body sends symptoms so in our you know there's a lot of metaphor within energy flow coaching but it's the idea that we've tuned out to protect ourselves we've tuned out from our emotional feeling feedback brain is rewired affected the systems and this then leads to the, the plethora of debilitating symptoms that people can experience. So we then have to kind of, you know, sort of rewire that back. So there is there's a, there's a kind of brain retraining because we need to rewire the brain back. Uh, but we do it through reattuning to, to the body, reattuning to sensation, to feeling, to, to our emotion um, and, you know, processing it and working it through that way. If that, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. I think a lot of us, when we're in the midst of serious health challenges, we, we want to understand things a bit, but mostly we just want to understand what we should do. So I'm just thinking, like, you know, what is there something, like in three sentences or less, that a person watching could be like, this is what I take away from this moving forward. Here's one small um, shift in how I'm approaching my recovery. What, what would that look like? It's tough in a way. There is, obviously, what the ideas I'm offering are, are, are theory to, to, a, to a large extent. But, it, you know, it's, it, there's two bits. There's one is, well, what, what does it mean? What exactly, am I, what exactly am I saying? And then the other bit is, well, what, what do we do? How can we deal with this? The first bit in terms of, well, what exactly am I saying? Well, what I'm saying is, over time, when emotion gets blocked, the body will send symptoms. So, you know, the, the way I've kind of talked about this is that it's almost like the body turns up the, turns up the volume with things. And, and people have, will have had the experience of symptoms changing when it's like a maths equation. The, the, you know, your body is your friend. Your body is always trying to uh, look after you. And I think that's crucial. The body's trying to look after you. It's trying to work stuff through. Um, and, you know, this is why we have acute illnesses. This is why we have viruses like colds and flus is the body's working stuff through. But of course, in Western culture, we just usually pathologize those things and see them as something bad rather than, well, my body is my friend. So when we look at, well, my body is my friend, the symptoms are messengers. The symptoms are trying to tell us something. It's not that symptoms are evil invaders. My body has my back. My body is my friend, even though this may be deeply uncomfortable. It's actually my body is looking all of the time to right itself, to self-heal, because that's that's what it does. And I need to commend it for that. I need to support it. I need to appreciate that's what it's doing. But ultimately, when we can look at where its symptoms are, my body trying to tell me something. There's a message in there. The symptoms are a messenger. And what I'm saying with many of the health challenges that I work with is that whilst there are multiple primary causes, and it is a complex picture, if we're to distill it down to the three sentences, which I've exceeded, obviously, is that symptoms are messengers and very often the message relates to blocked emotion and a need to reattune, realign with and process that blocked emotion.
That makes sense. Thank you. That does help me to understand it better. You have such a comprehensive understanding of all of this. I suspect that many of the rest of us can get a little bit lost in all of the detail. It's 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 really nice to have that understanding. It's it, it's it's a tough one in a way because because I've been doing this for twenty about twenty years. When we started this work and we started to talk about emotions and stress and in relation to health, we took a lot of flack because it's only been the last, I don't know, four or five years, the whole mind body thing has taken off and with trauma and ACEs and people kind of accepting that, yeah, okay, well, you know, there is there is this connection and it's maybe it's not just there's mental health and physical health to, you know, that actually maybe the two are c- combined. But we would take a lot of flack, you know, people would attack us a lot for for making that connection. So how can you say that emotions connects to my physical health? Are you saying it's all in the mind? Was it, well actually no, it's not all in the mind. It's all in the body, really, because emotion is that complex physiological process everyone has their ideas about what emotion is everyone will have their own intuitive theories about it Uh, so that's you know that's my my desire to want to be clear about in energy flow coaching how we are viewing our emotions and our emotional feelings and how we see that connection between our emotion and symptoms I'm wondering as well, because I know you talk a bit about spirituality, and there is definitely an emerging focus on this from things like yoga, meditation, and so forth. So is that connected to emotion? And what does that look like? I think it probably is connected to emotion. I think that within energy flow coaching, we, we talk about having a true self, this umbrella kind of true self. And what we're looking to do is get in touch with our emotion and unblock the flow of our true self which is our energy flows the idea that well we have an energy flow a flow of consciousness that comes through all of us and then we when we can align with our own energy flow that things just seem to go well and our our bodies seem to be much more in better shape the connection between emotion and and that spiritual part so that that true self could be seen to be a spiritual bit for me it is that well we're all connected we're all aspects of one consciousness and our our true self as i say is that something which is more than just what i see in the mirror there is a flow of consciousness that comes through me that's connected to everything else so that's the spiritual part of energy flow coaching emotion we see as as being a tap on the shoulder to realign ourselves with our true self so it's a very empowerment focus so rather than saying for example well my boss makes me angry because we have this inside out view that well nothing out there makes me feel anything we would say right well the anger I'm, i'm experiencing is is an invitation to realign my behavior with my true self so what's what would my authentic way of dealing with this context be so that's the connection i think for us it's the you know it's our emotion is very much a human thing it is that it connects both mind and body but for me the the spiritual piece is the uh, emotion is i think a lot of illness is vi- is vibrational stats in that vibrational field and i think emotion is out there in that vibrational field so i think I think a lot more is is impacted by our emotion than than we currently think. So I think I think emotion plays a massive influence on everything. And we, to a certain extent, we we know this. You know, in, in research that shows that when they did uh, research where they put a bunch of people in a in a hotel room and introduced a common cold virus, between twenty to forty percent of people would pick up the virus. Why is it that some people don't? Well, it's because their immune systems are not suppressed. And there's well, there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. And yes, there will be things that relate to diet, nutrition, because that plays an important part. But people's people's emotion and the extent to which that that emotion has been suppressed over the last 24 hours to week to months will play an, a, a role in whether that individual picks up that cold virus. For me, that's the key thing, is emotion is bringing us back. It's information leading us back to our true self. And the true self is that kind of spiritual bit. It's the part of us that connects to everything everything else. It's the part of us that's beyond personality. There are many kind of aspects to us. And it's the for me, it's the overarching part of us that connects to, to all that is. Do you find, do you think things are changing, that there's more of a coming together of emotion and spirituality and science and mainstream medicine? Have you found that? I hope so. I hope so. I I think that there's no doubt to me that 
that more people are, are waking up spiritually and i think that i think that what we've experienced over the last couple of years has been a catalyst for that there are lots of people that are reflecting on themselves reflecting on their lives and and therefore waking up uh, and i've seen a huge proportions of people that are you know going through that process but i think with this spiritual stuff what we have is now acceptable spirituality even within businesses even within organizations people will bring in teachers to offer yoga or mindfulness or meditation and these are spiritual ideas um, and these are commonly accepted so there's no doubt that we're ushering in spiritual principles these you know the yo your yoga your tai chi your qigong your meditation these are at the, kind of at the forefront um and be and are widely accepted so yeah I, I mean i'm not sure so much in terms of medicine i guess that's going to be down to the individual practitioner that you have i think there is there are probably too many things in medicine currently that kind of are in conflict uh with some spiritual ideas but i think generally you know people are far more open to this and far more open to the role of spirituality in health and i think it plays a massive role in health and i think it's you know for us within uh, the work that we do it's one of the things that we that i like about this notion of aligning with a true self is that in, in changing patterns which is often what we do when we're aligning with emotion and therefore it can be that we behave in a different way when we're when we're doing that sometimes our identity or my sense of self is challenged because we will you know our mind or our ego will have this idea about who we are and then it may be that our emotions and our feelings our intuitions are in a knowing that guidance from inside might be telling us or guiding us pointing us in a different way and therefore that can challenge who we think we are when we open up to this this notion of a true self that encompasses all of it, it can become a little bit easier to make that shift. That may be a little bit confusing. I do appreciate that. Oh, it's it's really, it's fascinating, actually. I'm, I'm soaking up as much as I can. I'm going to have to um, watch this again to to get all the all the information sink in. But yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to go through all of this. It, it really does help me to see things in a different light and puts things in perspective. And just even just that simple message of, Letting things flow, our symptoms, our messengers, our emotions, our messengers. And I think so much of us in life, we're just trying to push everything down, fight against everything, ignore everything, control everything. Sums and it guess... up there beautifully. That sums it up beautifully. As soon as something is a bit wrong, we view it as a problem. I mean, I, I work with quite a broad range of clients for people that are chronically ill with CFS and fibro through to executive coaching. And a, a lot of what I do is is trying to define when there is a problem what the problem is because we are playing a massive role in the creation of our experience and this is where emotion ties in as well what we put our attention upon because our attention is so important we are energetically feeding and we will have an emotional response about it you give attention to something you're kind of teaching yourself that this is important so you will have quite an emotional a growing um response from an emotional perspective to what what uh, to that thing so being mindful of that being aware of that is, is is extremely important so if we're trying to control all the time if we're trying to fix if we're trying to if we view things as problems then it, it, amazingly as a self-fulfilling prophecy that's what our experience is so we are we do play a massive role in the creation of the experience that we're having so thus if we can simplify life if we can have a few kind of core ideas and then mainly really get into this notion of right well my body is my friend my body's working for me it's going to give me some nudges it really wants to flow i have an energy flow this wants to take me and i just need to be nudged back on track what if a lot of this stuff is not needed what if i'm viewing problems that maybe aren't there what if i'm trying to control things i don't need to control so i think all you know you summed it up really really well that i think that i think that's what we do in western life we fixate we try to control um we overthink everything um and we inhibit our own flow we we close the valve to our own flow and we need to open it up and just allow ourselves to flow well, this has all been very enlightening uh, for people who are watching there's obviously a lot to cover if they wanted to connect with you or learn more or learn about energy flow coaching what's the best way that they could do that well there's energyflowcoaching.com energyflowcoaching is on instagram on facebook and 
me as Kyle Davis Davies on LinkedIn. And there's the Intelligent Body book, which is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and other places. I'd love to hear from people. And after the last interview, I, I, I a few people who got in touch, and I'd I'd love to know what people think. It's re- it, it is tricky because I'm I'm talking about this all the time it's sometimes i maybe get a bit lost uh, in terms of am i making sense here? so i hope i'm making sense if i'm not making sense please do get in touch with me i'm always excited to talk to people about this get people's views because this is just these are just ideas which are evolving and growing because i think collectively as we're all shifting together then our awarenesses our truths our knowledge shifts as our consciousness shifts our sense of truth our awareness also shifts so these all of this stuff is evolving all of the time and i think all healing modalities need to evolve as we evolve as we shift so yeah please do get in touch and uh you know come along and have a chat with me Wonderful. I'm sure people appreciate that very much. I have no doubt that you're very busy. So I think it's just incredible that you make the time for people like this. And of course, all of this will be linked in the video description. So you can find everything that Kyle just mentioned, just expand that description, and it will all be there. So thank you once again, Kyle, for coming on the channel and sharing so much of your experience and your insight on on health and healing. I just really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And to all of you watching, as always, looking forward to your comments and your questions on this video here. I'm sure Kyle would be happy to answer things there as well. And if you enjoyed this video, I've got a playlist. I'll link it up here of expert interviews, people just like Kyle, other authors, doctors, researchers, and so forth, sharing their wealth of experience and insight on health and healing. So that is it for today. Thank you again, Kyle. Thank you to everyone who is watching, and I'll see you in the next video.